Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, pizza fans of all ages. My name is Mike and welcome to Pizza Mon Mario. And it is finally time after three delays for episode five of Mike's Top Tens. This will be the first Top Tens episode featuring a certain TV show. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my top 10 favorite episodes of my life as a teenage robot. Now, if you guys have been following the channel for a while, you know that I'm a big Teenage Robot fan. Not only was it one of the shows of my childhood, but the show that I look back as an adult and appreciate even more than when I was a kid, and I think still holds up to this day. I love the characters, the action, the drama, the creativity, the animation. It was just a banner of a show, if you ask me. And with the show turning 20 years old this year, I thought it'd be nice as a celebration to share my top 10 favorite episodes from the show. Well, I've gotten this video up on the 1st, which is the day of the anniversary, but nowadays me uploading videos on time is about as common as finding people who like season 6 through 8 of Spongebob, which is not common in the slightest, by the way, even by the biggest Spongebob fans. But we're finally here now, better late than never, I guess. So I had a chance to watch through the entire series over July, and I come up with a list that I think I'm pretty happy with. It might be episodes you agree with, some episodes you might not agree with. Might be some episodes that should be higher. Might be some episodes that should be lower. Maybe there's some missing episodes in the top 10 list. I don't know. All I can say is that everything I say in this video is entirely my opinion. You know, if you're someone out there who can't handle other people having different opinions than you, then you come to the wrong channel. I don't allow that here. Anyway, let's not waste any more time and get into this list. So y'all just take a seat, get comfortable, grab your snacks and beverages, and let's get started. Kicking off this list, at number 10, we have Sister Sledgehammer from Season 2. This was the episode where Smytus of the Cluster captures Jenny and takes her back to Cluster Prime. Once there, he takes control of her mind using Cluster Drones and turns her into a giant doomsday robot with only one thought on his mind, to destroy the Earth. Then, Jenny's sisters, the other XJ units, awaken because of Jenny being in trouble and they rush in to save their sister and the Earth. I had to put at least one episode featuring the other XJ units as a main focus in this list, I feel. I was always a fan of the other XJ units, and I thought they were entertaining to watch. As far as this episode is concerned, I liked watching the XJ units attempt to rescue Jenny, watching them combine together to make different weapons I thought was pretty cool. Even if it was unsuccessful as they ended up getting captured by the Doomsday Robot, and ended up becoming part of it, until the robot started looking like this, which dang man, that robot's got style. There were also some funny moments in the episode, like when XJ5 tried to reach into Jenny's heart to get her to snap out of the state, only to end up getting captured by the Doomsday robot afterwards. And also how it looked like Smytus was going to win the battle, and all it took was XJ1's like Peter Griffin-esque projectile vomit snapping Jenny out of the mind control, allowing her to escape the Doomsday robot and defeat Smytus like an XJ1, the real hero of the episode. Overall, this is my favorite of the XJ unit episodes. I like their debut episode too, but this one I like a bit more. And if I can only put one of them on here, it would be this one. Number nine on the list goes to Gridiron Glory from season one. Not exactly a football fan, but I can enjoy a good sports episode of a cartoon show once in a while. That includes football episodes. I mean, there are shows like Hey Arnold, The Angie Beavers, and even the Super Mario World cartoon that made some football episodes I really do enjoy. And this one obviously being no exception. This one's about Jenny trying out for cheerleading, but accidentally gets herself the position of quarterback for the Chemington High football team, known as the Quakers, after throwing a godlike pass to the at the time quarterback, Jocks. As Jenny performs on the team, she dominates the competition using her powers to score touchdowns and win games, thus becoming a star player and getting a big head in the process. I thought it was fun to watch Jenny perform on the team. A robot using her powers to win games and not get called out for cheating was pretty hilarious to me. And I think her ego boost was actually handled pretty well compared to most sports episodes that take this kind of route. 
Like for one thing, it only lasted like a few minutes of the episode, so it didn't feel like it was dragged on. Her confidence quickly shifted when it came time for her final match of the season against the Polytech team, who was revealed to have a new quarterback, Jock, former Quakers quarterback. With a little assistance from Brad, Jenny manages to win the game and the season for the Tremonton Quakers and hangs up the jersey, learning that all the fans she accumulated from the games are just her fans, not her friends. This is a very fun sports episode, in my opinion. It was very entertaining. I think the writing was well done. And overall, the episode was just a big touchdown. Number eight on the list goes to Voyage to the Planet of the Bikers from season three. The episode when Jenny gets turned into a motorcycle courtesy of the space bikers. Now she must go to the Planet of the Bikers so they can change her back with Tuck as her rider. This episode brings an interesting insight on the space bikers' characters, which I do appreciate. Like it turns out that their home planet is actually this happy-go-lucky place where nothing goes wrong, essentially. And the space bikers have jobs working at the school there, with Letta as the school principal, Tammy as a teacher, Sludge I think also as a teacher, Olga as a nurse, and Lenny as a janitor. And it turns out the space bikers don the space bikers persona on Tremerton, to blow off steam, you know, from school and all. I mean, whenever I get burned out from school, I usually blow off steam by playing video games or watching television, but to each their own, I guess. Some of the fun moments in the episode include the two chase scenes, both on Tremerton and on the planet of the bikers. It was satisfying to see the space bikers get exposed in the space biker persona for the school, and to see Jenny reverted back to robot form. This is overall a fun episode, to give us some exploration on the Space Bikers characters. Also, is it just me, or do the Space Bikers bikes remind you of F-Zero? I don't know, something about the way they hover remind me of uh, F-Zero machines. Especially because in the episode, Letta even said, you can't boost yet. And you know, in F-Zero, you can't boost until uh, your second lap. I don't know, I just felt like it's worth mentioning. Number seven on the list goes to Enclosure of Doom, also from season three. This episode is about Jenny waking up in a strange location with no memory of how she got there in the first place. And it turns out Kilgore is also trapped in this place and the two must work together to find a way out. This is another kind of plot episode I really like. You know, the adventure escape esque plot where two characters, don't really, especially ones that don't get along very well, working together to find a way out of a situation they're in. It was always kind of interesting to watch for me. And this episode being no exception. I like how Jenny and Kilgore work off one another in the episode. I also like the reveal that they're inside Armageddroid, which Kilgore himself rebuilt. It's actually pretty impressive since he's a small guy building that entire menace of destruction. It's actually beyond impressive. It proves that Kilgore is actually more of a threat than we give him credit for. Despite that though, even he couldn't control Armageddroid. He's a living creature that makes his own decisions. So we have to once again work with Jenny to destroy Armageddroid once again. Not only is this episode a good adventure escape-esque episode, it also gives us more on Kilgore and proves that if you take him seriously, he can't be threatened as a villain. I mean, come on, the dude we built Armageddroid alone. Enough said. Also, it's very ironic how both Armageddroid and Kilgore appeared in this episode when their debut episodes were sisters of each other back in season two. I wonder if that was intentional, that was just a coincidence. Maybe both. Number six on the list goes to Hostile Makeover from season one. This episode is about Jenny experiencing changes of puberty, including face bolts, or pimples in her case, voice changes, mood swings, and growing wires under her armpits, which I guess represent armpit hair. So this episode basically takes the puberty storyline, which you can all relate to, by the way. I don't know why anyone wouldn't be able to relate to the puberty storyline. Thing is, though, this episode actually takes a different approach with it, by having Vexus be the cause of all of Jenny's changes. After infecting her with a nanobot-like virus during a battle, causing him to turn into a monster. A hideous monster! I thought that was a pretty cool twist on the formula. And I like Braden a lot in this episode as well. He's very supportive of Jenny's situation. You know, he had some pretty funny lines, like his big Sally bit, 
in a line where he's like, Someone's having mood swings. I don't know, that line always killed me. I can't do a good Brad voice, sorry. That one of my better impressions. And you know, seeing Jenny turn into like this giant Donkey Kong looking thing was pretty interesting. I also like the last few minutes of the episode, like the little alien parody and Jenny having a picture taken, because it's picture day by the way, with their insides all open and nanobot. This is also pretty relatable. Not the uh, open up insides part. The part about looking back at pictures taking a view that come out embarrassing. And you're like, what the fudge is this? I look like a flippin' drunk. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Overall, this was a relatable episode with a nice little twist in it as well. You know, Brad really shined in the episode. I found it enjoyable. Not enjoyable enough to put in the top five, but top 10 and number six, for sure. And this is also the debut of Vexus as well. I'm kind of surprised it took her this long to debut in the show. She's the main antagonist and took her until episode 9 to make an appearance. 17, you count the sister episodes. Or whatever. Starting the top 5, we have Daydream Believer from season 1. Now, if you ask me, My Life as a Teenage Robot is one of those shows that wasn't like the funniest show out there, but it didn't really need to be because this action and drama really did all the talking. But this episode though, like this is in my opinion, the funniest episode of My Life as a Teenage Robot. It's basically about Jenny wanting to have a dream, literally have a dream. So Noah installs a dream chip inside Jenny that she can activate while in sleep mode. So she's gonna have to have a dream. Eventually Jenny starts to abuse the dream chip and so get into an accident that breaks it, causing her to be permanently in dream mode. Start to see everyone in Tremerton as monsters. Seeing Jenny's delusions, thinking everyone's a monster is very hilarious to me. Seeing Brad and Tuck like these goat creatures in like the Dr. Seuss animation style. Speaking of animation style, let's talk about that real quick. I love a lot of the animation switch ups in this episode. Between like the dream sequence with Jenny and Don Prima, to like the Kraken scene, to the 1930s animation, and of course Dr. Seuss animation. Like, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish has nothing on this episode. Yeah, I said it. So yeah, this episode was hilarious. Had some beautiful animation. Very creative. Had some nice moments between Jenny and Brad. So overall, an episode I would definitely recommend to you guys. If you've never seen the show before. I just strongly recommend doing so anyway. And definitely deserved number five position on this list. I mean, it could have been number one, but there's four episodes I put higher. Number four on the list goes to Brad Venture from season two. We're finally back with season two. This episode is about Brad wanting to go on his own adventure as he's tired of being stuck in Jenny's shadow, but he ends up getting himself into trouble with the evil Dr. Locust, who plans to learn about the ins and outs of Jenny for his own evil doing. And with Jenny out of commission, after getting ambushed by Dr. Locust, Brad's gonna have to put his skills, or lack thereof, to the test rescue her. The thing I like the most about this episode is Jenny and Brad's dynamic. I think it's very sweet. Like for one thing, all Brad ever wanted was to be a hero just like Jenny. And Jenny decides to give him that luxury by helping him escape through all the traps in Dr. Locus's hideout. Secretly without him knowing that is. Of course Brad does eventually find out what really happened after Dr. Locus's daughter Melody tells him about Jenny's capture. And despite that, he was still willing to go back and rescue Jenny. You're a good man, Brad. Good man. Afterwards, Brad had to go through all the traps in the hideout himself while Jenny was incapacitated. And it seems like he's doing it all by himself until it's revealed that it was Melody helping him out. As it turns out, she's a robot, just like Jenny. And the episode ends with Jenny and Brad embracing and Jenny claiming Brad that he's her hero. This is a very sweet episode that expanded on Jenny and Brad's relationship. And I also liked the introduction of Melody. Sadly, you never got a chance to really see her storyline conclude, along with other characters like Vega and Misty, because the show never got a fourth season. But it is what it is. But yeah, Brad Adventure, great episode for sure. Number three on the list goes to The Great Unwashed 
from season one. In this episode, Jenny ends up ruining her paint job at the junkyard while trying to achieve dynamite for a dynamite salesman. Of course, on the same day that Donna Prima is handing out invitations for one of his parties. Jenny obviously wants to go, but she's got to fix herself up first. So she goes to an auto shop where a bunch of mechanics agree to help her out. This leads us to this pretty cool montage of Jenny getting the spa treatment. If you ever wondered how robots got massages, well, watch this episode and you'll find out how. It is pretty fascinating to watch, not gonna lie. And this little makeover gave us birth to Hot Rod Jenny, which is an awesome paint job, by the way. It's been said by many My Life as a Teenage Robot fans. I mean, can you blame us? I mean, look at her, she's cute. I don't care if she's a cartoon character. She's adorable. Don't question me. We've all had cartoon crushes before, right? You probably like Sailor Moon. Yeah, don't lie to me. You like Sailor Moon. Great. Now people are going to think that I simp for cartoon characters. Good job, Mike. And your dumb jokes. You stupid f <laughs> Moving on. Jenny's new look becomes a major hit with the rest of the students at Tremerton High even getting the attention of Don Prima, who then invites Jenny to his party to be the center of attention, much to the dismay of the Crust Cousins who also want that position. In retaliation, they hire the Mudslinger to get the dirt on Jenny, literally get the dirt on Jenny. Eventually, Mudslinger tries to set up a trap for Jenny, trying to set up her paint job, which fails, and then we get a chase scene of Jenny trying to catch Mudslinger while also avoiding all of his traps. This is a pretty cool chasing to watch. Watching Jenny just narrowly avoid all these traps and whatnot. That's actually pretty cool. It's like, dang girl, you're fast. She gives Sonic the Hedgehog a run for his money. Eventually, Mudslinger does turn the tables on Jenny, messes up her paint job, prompting Jenny to pull out one of her mighty mallets and getting ready to fudge up Mudslinger. Mudslinger eventually confesses that the Crust Cousins put him up to this and that he'd never been invited to a party in his life. So Jenny offers Muslina her invitation, which he accepts, and then he goes on to the party and messes everything up, while also riding out the Crust Cousins. And the episode ends with Brad and Tuck on the way to the party, seeing Jenny upset because she can't go to that party anymore, thanks to that paint job getting messed up. And like the good friends they are, they decide to help Jenny out by starting their own party using water guns, along with the mechanics from earlier. And Jenny can now be happy that she's having fun while the Crust Cousins and everyone else at Don's party are most likely not. A very heartwarming ending to an already great episode of My Life as a Teenage Robot. It was very wholesome and had some funny jokes like the dynamite salesman and Jenny getting wolf whistled by a car. The Crust Cousins getting punished is always satisfying to see. And a heartwarming ending to boot. I guess this episode lives up to its name, The Great Unwashed. It's a great episode of the show, and one I highly recommend watching. If you haven't watched the show before, or if you plan on revisiting it. This would have been number one on the list, probably, but I happen to have two episodes up higher. But honestly though, all three of the episodes in the top three are all equal in quality, if you ask me. So any one of them could have been number one. But there's two episodes I put up higher, just for this list. Number two on the list goes to the Christmas special, A Robot for All Seasons, from season two. In the show's one and only Christmas special, Jenny meets Todd Sweeney, a rich kid who feels he never gets what he truly wants for Christmas. So Jenny decides to help him out with that by letting him take her home with him so he can play with a giant robot action figure. But it turns out what Todd really wanted for Christmas was weapons. And I guess Jenny pretty much is a walking weapon. The ultimate weapon, as Todd says in the episode. He kidnaps her, takes control of her mind, and uses her to destroy all the holidays for one whole year. When it comes time for Christmas again, Jenny wakes up, not knowing what just happened, and makes her escape. When she goes back to town though, she sees that everyone, including her own friends and mother, are against her. Then Sheldon, who still believes in Jenny because he's a simp for her, informs about what's going on here, and it's up to Jenny to stop Todd from destroying Christmas. I gotta say right off the bat, for a Christmas special, this episode was surprisingly dark. 
I mean, not Arnold's Christmas dark, but dark nonetheless. Seeing all of Tremonton, including Jenny's own mother and friends, turn on her, you generally feel sorry for her. And even Todd, I mean, his reasoning for wanting to destroy all the holidays was because he could never have any cheer himself ever since his parents left him. It doesn't excuse his actions, but you can help but feel sorry for him too. And it was at least satisfying to see him learn his lesson and learn the true meaning of Christmas. And even his parents were turned by the end of the episode from the retirement vacation. It took him so long to come back because they're looking for the perfect gift for him. But it turns out he doesn't really want the gift. He's just happy that he has his parents again, which was incredibly heartwarming. We get other cool moments in the episode, such as the fight scenes with Jenny and the elves, and also the fight between Jenny and Santa Claus. Who'd ever think that Santa would be this athletic? I mean, Dane, man. I wonder who went in a fight between this Santa and the Santa on Rise of the Guardians. And even Sheldon got a kiss from Jenny by the end, under a mistletoe. I'm sure that'll be a moment he'll remember for the rest of his life. Overall, I really love this Christmas special. It's a good combination of dark and heartwarming, with some fun action scenes, and not only is it an episode I recommend watching, but it's also an episode I make sure I watch every single year for the holidays, along with the Spongebob Christmas specials, Arnold's Christmas, etc. And now we'll move on to the honorable mentions. Now in terms of honorable mentions, we can go all night with this, because there's still so many great episodes to talk about. But because I want this video to be over five hours long, I picked four out that I might want to say a few things about. So, let's get into those now. It came from next door, from season one, otherwise known as the pilot episode. I feel like I had to talk about the pilot episode at some point in this video. I mean, it was a great setup for the show. We have to learn about who Jenny is and her story about being a crime-fighting robot that wants to live the life of a teenager. We got to see how she met Brad and Tuck and had her first interaction with real friends to hang out with. What more do I need to say? It was a great pilot for a great show. That's all I need to know. Speak No Evil, also from season one. The episode when Jenny, on a trip to Japan, loses her English disc and only speak Japanese. A nice episode with a neat premise and funny moments. And one thing I found interesting about the episode was that Jenny's voice actress, Janice Kawai, I think that's how you say her name. If I got it wrong, I apologize. You know I'm not good with names. She actually speaks Japanese in real life, as she is of Japanese descent. And I think it's pretty cool they made an episode dedicated to that. Humiliation 101, from season two. The episode where Nora comes to speak at Tremonton High at a science conference to discuss how Jenny was made. Another pretty relatable episode, you know. Some people have those parents that may embarrass them in front of other people. I also found it funny watching all of Jenny's attempts to keep the science conference from happening. Even calling up villains to see what they were doing to try to get them to cause mayhem, but they're all too busy too. And also, how does she have all the numbers to all these villains? That's what I'm curious about. Ball and Chain from season three. The episode where Brad attempts to marry Tammy of the Space Bikers as he finally found a woman who actually wants to be with him. But it turns out that the Space Bikers way of getting married is to have the husband be an eternal slave. Another heartwarming episode that expands upon Jenny and Brad's relationship it really showed how much Jenny values her friendship with Brad. It may also hint some secret feelings towards him. I don't know, I mean, she did kiss him in the episode. I guess it might be somewhat of a clue but it was never brought up again after this episode. But still, a very wholesome one, and almost made the top 10 list, but just lost its position to sit with Sledgehammer. And now, let's get into number one on the list. And number one on my list, my top 10 favorite My Life as a Teenage Robot episodes, is Escape from Cluster Prime, from season two. Even though in my DVD sets, it's in season three for some reason. I imagine the Teenage Robot fans watching this expected this episode to make the list. So I probably don't need to say a whole lot about it, but I'll say what I can anyway. The episode's about Jenny causing destruction to Tremonton during a fight with Vexus during its 300th anniversary celebration. It begins to question what her purpose of being built was if she's not appreciated for her heroism. Eventually, she ends up getting herself trapped 
in Cluster Prime. It seems like bad news on paper for Jenny, until she finds out that's actually a robot paradise. There's even a school here, in which Jenny meets Vega and three of her close friends, Drab, Tuff, and Shell. Obviously robot counterparts to Brad, Tuck, and Sheldon. While Jenny's having fun on Cluster Prime, back on Earth, the Cluster has invaded. With Jenny nowhere in sight, Brad, Tuck, and the rest of Tremonton form an army to save Tremonton themselves. While Nora and Sheldon believe that Jenny's already been captured by the Cluster and try to find a way to get the Cluster Prime to rescue her. That's all I really want to say about the plot because I want to spoil too much of this episode for those of you who may never seen it before. I want you guys to watch it for yourself because we get the full experience, you know. But let me just say, this special was amazing. It incorporates every great aspect of this show and puts it in a blender. After all this build up, we finally got to see what Cluster Prime was really like. Jenny learned the purpose of why she was built. Watching the citizens of Tremonton fight back against the Cluster, save their city was pretty cool. And I like the dynamic between Sheldon and Nora, especially because they're both scientists. Like I said, I don't think I need to say much about this episode and why it's so great. Because I feel like a lot of Teenage Robot fans expected this episode to make the list. So I think that speaks for itself in that regards. If you're new to this show, however, want to find some episodes to watch, do yourself a favor and make sure this one the ones you watch. It's too bad this episode didn't perform well in ratings. Otherwise, we would probably got a fourth season. But I guess it is what it is. At least we got an episode that really showcased the best of the series. And those, ladies and gentlemen, are my top 10 favorite episodes of my life as a teenage robot. I think I did a pretty good job with this list, overall. I'm sure there's probably some episodes that I'm missing. I will say, there's not that many episodes of the show that I really don't like. Actually, I don't think there's any episode of the show I really dislike. I mean, I know there's some hated ones out there, like I Was a Preschool Dropout and Shell Game, for instance. But I think much like Spongebob, for me at least, even in some of its weaker or more hated episodes, I can tolerate them. But that's just me. I mean, some people might say that season three was a bit of a decline from the first two seasons, which I don't really agree with. I think there were some really good episodes in season three. I mean, heck, some of them made my top 10 list, so there's that for you. But overall, I think this was an excellent show and it maintained its quality through its entire run. And I enjoyed making this video. Thought it'd be a nice little tribute to my third favorite Nicktoon. Sorry I couldn't get up on time, but it is what it is. And if you made it this far in the video anyway, congratulations. And that's going to conclude this episode of Mike's Top 10s. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you didn't, let me know in the comments below if I disappointed you with this video. And I will punish myself by recording myself, taking my Wii remote, swinging it down, and hitting myself in the nuts. That'll be my punishment. If I disappointed any of you with this video. But anyway, if you guys have any ideas for Mike's Top 10s, any show you want me to do this kind of episode with, let me know in the comments below. But for right now, it's time for me to hit the road. That's going to be it for today's video. Did you like it? If you did, do me a solid and punch the like button below like a piece of dough. And if this is your first time on this channel, and you like what you saw, and you want to come back for more, hit that subscribe button to become a member of the Pizza Mind Mario Party today. Share it out with your friends, your boyfriends, your girlfriends, or whoever you want to share with. Hit that bell and turn notifications to be the first one to see all the kind of videos. That will be the time. Leave a comment. Until next time, this is your boy Mike signing out. So, peace out, John. Hope you have a great rest of your day.